Okay, so we've done a bunch of videos about React and using static lists, but how about fetch? How about doing AJAX calls? What if we're getting our data from some other server? That data is coming back and we want to be able to put that inside of our React application. So I'm just reusing one of the apps that I had already built. And what I'm going to do is on this home component, whenever this component is loaded, I want to be able to get data from a JSON file on a server, bring that back and display it. So here's my home component. In my constructor, my state has two things. One element called list. This is where I'm going to store my data that's coming from the server. So whatever data I'm getting, that's going to come down and be loaded into here. And another one, error, because I want to be able to display errors on the page. If there's a problem with the fetch, if I can't get the data, I need to tell the user about it. I don't want them just sitting there staring at a blank screen for 30 seconds and then saying, screw this and moving on to something else. I want to tell them there's a problem, not necessarily with my website, but with fetching the data. Okay, so inside of my render method, in the return, I'm going to do some conditional rendering here. I'm going to say, if this state error, so if it's not a falsy value, which null is, then I'm going to write out an h3 tag with this message, like that. So right now, there's no error message showing up on here because there isn't a problem. If I put an exclamation mark in here, and I'm flipping this to say, okay, if there is no error, write it out. Well, I'm not getting an error message because there was nothing inside there, but if I drill down inside of here, here's my home component, there's the h3 element being rendered because error was a falsy value. We remove this, save it, come back in here, drill down again inside of our home component, and there we are. There is no h3 element because there is no error. So that's what we're doing with this conditional rendering here. Now I want to do the same thing with my list. So I'm going to create a little JavaScript section inside my JSX, and I'm going to say this.state.list. Now it's going to exist. It's an empty array right now, but I'm going to check length. So if length is greater than zero, we could do just length because zero is a falsy value. Or if you feel more comfortable, you can say if the list is greater than zero, then I'm going to loop through it. And I'm going to use a map method because map will return something to us. Here's my map call, and inside of that, there will be items and indexes and so on. And then we put another set of parentheses, and inside that, this is where we render our content. So we're building a list item, one for each of the items that's coming back inside of our data. All right, and inside here, item dot, well, I believe title was the right thing. That's the right property name, but we can check that. Let's just take this. I'll open up a new tab just to see what we're going to be getting back. Zoom in, and there we are. So it is an array of objects. Here's the first object. For each item in my loop, it'll be one of these objects, so I will have a property called bell. Now I could take any one of these things. I could do title, price, whatever. But I want to render these all inside here. I could do item price as well. There we go. So we're going to loop through it and write out a whole bunch of list items. There's nothing here because we haven't actually fetched the data yet. But this is going to be the rendering part. And if this is empty, we're going to have the H3 written out saying that there is an error if something went wrong. We could alternatively say create a list item if the length was equal to zero. So we could do that inside here too. This is always an option that you have. Writing in a condition where this.state.length equals zero. If that's the case, then I'm going to return a single list item with, sorry, no data available.
should have been this state dot list dot length equals zero because it's the list that we're checking the length of. And there we are. Sorry, no data available. Okay, so that part's working. Now let's actually do the work of fetching it. Component did mount is the lifecycle event where we should be doing our fetch calls. Inside here, we know we've finished with the render. We've set up the initial state. Everything on the page is ready now for the data to be brought in, added to the state. That will cause components to re-render as needed. So here's our fetch. We pass in our variable. This is the URL that we're fetching. When it comes back, we've got our response object from the server. We're going to call the JSON method. There we go. That will convert it. And we always want to have a catch on the end here. The second one is going to take whatever the response was, convert it into an actual JavaScript object. That will be passed here into whatever function we put here. And I'm going to use my own function. Instead of putting everything inside of here, I'm going to call this function build list. So this dot build list. That function is going to be called after the data comes back and is converted into an actual JavaScript object. It gets passed up here into data. Now data is an array. We saw inside of here. The array starts right here. This whole thing, this is the array that's being passed in. So we need to take that and pass it into state. So we can just simply call this dot set state. List is going to be data. There we are. We're just passing the whole thing in. Now we could do a console log to take a look and see what we're getting inside of there. And I'm going to uh, format it a little bit. Okay, so right here, here is our data. Oh, sorry, for console log, it doesn't take these other parameters. I'm thinking of json.stringify. <laughs> console log just takes the string that we're going to output. And here it is right here. So there's all the data coming back. Here's the rendering happening. There's the title. There's the price for every one of the items. So we do have that. We do have our typical uh, message here that Whenever you're doing a loop, whenever you're rendering a whole bunch of items like we are here, I'm creating six list items. Whenever you do that, you really need to put a key prop inside of here. So inside the li, we need a key. And we may as well save the, uh, the id as well. We can do a, a prop like that. And it would be item.id. And we can use the same one here. So if we did add a click listener to each one of these list items, this prop right here, ID, would have that information. So here we have URL calls build list. Build list takes the entire array. We pass the array into the list value here that's inside of state. Doing so causes this to re-render. We're looping through because state list has changed. We're generating the list items at that point. So after component did mount, that's when this is taking place. So if we can test that if you want, we can say console.log did mount. And inside of here, console.log render. So we save that, come back in here. There it is. Render is called first, then did mount, and then render again after we have the list. So this is the sequence. This is what's happening here. Now our last thing that we should always put in is this error. This is going to be coming from the catch. When catch is called, it means there was something that went wrong with our fetch call. We want to take this and put it inside of here. So our error object. We can call it error if we want. Here's our function. And inside of here, we're going to call this.setState. And we're going to set this.state.error 
equal to our variable error, just like that. Or, thanks to ES6, we can just do this, and that will set the error value. There we go. We have no error, but it's there if we want it. We can take a look inside of the home component. There's route, and here's home. And inside of state, we now have this list with the six elements in our array. And here's error. It's still null because nothing went wrong. Okay, and that's it. That's how to do fetch. That's how you add Ajax calls into your React application. Now, if you haven't used fetch before, I'll put a link to um, my, I've got a whole bunch of videos on Ajax and using fetch. So I will put uh, a link to that playlist inside of here for you. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.